I want to let you know about something that very few people realize we're doing, but we are big on discipleship. And we have a program that we call DEMO. It stands for Discipleship Evangelism Missional Outreach. We are using this all around the world, but we are focusing primarily on three nations in Africa right now. And we literally have hundreds of thousands of people per week that go through this discipleship program. And we aren't just giving people a fish, but we are teaching them to fish. We are training them on how to raise their own crops, how to deal with purified water. It's just a program that's reaching a lot of people. There's a lot more information about it than what I'm able to give you here. Go check it out, our demo ministry. We've been talking about the benefits of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and Don is taught on how to receive the Holy Spirit. Tubade tuwa ogera kumiganyulo ejo kugera mu nnimi era don ayogedde ne kungeri jo enzo kufuna mu moyo mutukuvu I want to talk about what some of the benefits of speaking in tongues are era njagalo kugera kujimu kumiganyulo je tufuna mu kugera oku mu nnimi and there are many benefits I'm certainly not going to be able to hit them all kati emigasuru minji nyo we miganyulo minji nyo era sigena kusobala jo nakujogera ko but god has never done anything without the power of his holy spirit even in the creation, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, it says that the Spirit brooded or hovered over the waters, and then creation took place. God even he anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus didn't operate independent of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus told his disciples, he said, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yesu ya gamba baigiri zwawe, noruvanyuma lwecho, mulifuna amanyi, uruvanyuma ngo moyo mtuku vabaseko. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Turono, mulive ilaba juliru wabange, muyeru salemi. And in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. Nemubu yudaya, ne Samaria, ne kunkumeru zoneze nsi. So God didn't operate independent of the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't operate independent of the Holy Spirit, and he told us not to operate independent of the Holy Spirit. There are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is only one of them. But speaking in tongues is something that accompanied the coming of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts on many different occasions. And it's also one of the gifts that I think has some of the greatest potential for blessing in it. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, there's a number of verses there. That talk about the gift of speaking in tongues and the benefit that it has for us personally. So this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And in verse 2, it says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue. Speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto man to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. 
na ye ategeze byo bunabbi azimbe kanisa so this verse 4 says that when you speak in tongues you edify yourself kati unorunyo okuna lugambye nti boyogera munnimi oba wezimba weka the greek word that was translated ed- translated edified here ichikambe cholu yonani echavunulwa munti wezimba weka means to build up or promote spiritual growth Chitegeza okubira ngo zimba wezimba mumuoyo. Every one of you need to promote spiritual growth and encourage yourself. Buliomuku mwe weta agokubanga wezimba mumuoyo. Matter of fact, over in Isaiah chapter 28 where it prophesied about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Elecha mjisaya esuri ya virimumu nana wechala guru wako ukunja kuo moyo mtu kufu. Noko ugera mnimi. And speaking in tongues. It said specifically that this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Speaking in tongues rests you and it refreshes you, so it builds you up and promotes spiritual growth. Man, that's something that we need to do on a regular basis. You don't understand what's being said, but just praying in tongues will build you up. Here's another way of saying it over in Jude chapter 1. And in verse 20 it says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost, verse 21 says, Keep yourselves in the love of God. Praying in the Holy Spirit is talking about speaking in tongues. And when you speak in tongues, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. And you keep yourself in the love of God. If you ever feel like your faith is in, uh, uh, insufficient, like you need your faith strengthened, pray in tongues, build yourself up on your most holy faith. If you ever feel like that you need more of the love of God functioning in your life, then pray in tongues and keep yourself in the love of God. If you ever feel like you need to promote spiritual growth and edify yourself, pray in tongues. And here's another truth that I think a lot of people have missed about praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now compare this with what Paul, the same writer, said in chapter 2 of this same book. This is the same man speaking to the same group of people. And he said in verse 6, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Agamba wati, tinayeri yabu abakuzemu muoyo, tuogera ili ya magezi, 
na ye amagezi agataliga mu mulembe guno oba agaba fuzi abo mu mulembe guno abagwawo na ye tuogera amagezi ga katonda gechiama agali ga kwekedwa katonda geyalagire da NC na tezina bawo olwekitiwa kya fe you know paul spoke of god mani paulo yayogira katonda and had a revelation of the grace of God in a way that even his contemporaries struggled with. It was just supernatural how he got this revelation of God. And he said that his revelation it it was given to him and he spoke it in wisdom but not the wisdom of this world but the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. Iranga yogera nti okubikulirwa ko yafuna yakufuna kuveri katonda tina yera yengi ya kuogeranga mti ya kuogeranga muna magezi gana agawa antu agensi ya kuogeranga na magezi agubu katonda kubanga chari nga chama. Now compare that with what we just read over in 1 Corinthians 14.2. The latter part of this says that in the Spirit you are speaking mysteries when you pray in tongues. You know how I believe that Paul got this supernatural revelation? This isn't the only way, but I believe certainly one of the ways in a dominant way. Was that he prayed in tongues, and as he prayed in tongues, this scripture tells us what's happening. We are speaking forth the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And then it says down here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 13, it says, Wherefore let him that prayeth in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. I believe Paul interpreted his tongue. When you pray in tongues, you're speaking the hidden wisdom of God, things that only the Spirit could know. They go beyond natural ability. And all you have to do is pray that God will reveal it to your mind and give you wisdom. And I believe that that's how Paul got this supernatural wisdom. So here's another benefit of speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, say for instance you come up against a decision and you don't know what to do and you're trying to discern God's will. Go to speaking in tongues and as you speak in tongues, the Bible says you are praying the hidden wisdom of God. And then just pray that you interpret and say, God, show me. What it is that my spirit is praying, because your spirit has perfect revelation. All you have to do is gain that knowledge. You know, there's no reason for you to speak in tongues and not benefit from it. We have this precedent right here in 1 Corinthians 14, 13 to pray that we interpret. And so, I pray in tongues, believing that as I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking forth the hidden wisdom of God 
Kale no, msaba munimi, ilapu yetu nga msaba, msaba nzikirizanti, msaba ama gezi kakutunaga ama kusiki. And then I pray that God would simply give me understanding. Ilane msaba, nti katunda mpu kutegeira, mwiyo vienba de msaba. You know, we said right here in this second verse, 1 Corinthians 14 too. Mwaitu ayuge dewa no, mutsure no, yaba kulise chisoka, esule kumine nyo nyinuru woku vili. That when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays, but your understanding is unfruitful. Ntikubanga boyogera munimi, ayogera munimi, tayogera nabantu, kubanga tuwali ategera vya ayogera. All an interpretation is, is your understanding becoming fruitful. Nee, katichetuito kufu, nulakwe kubera nti, gwe osomu kutegera vino vyo bado saba. If you were praying in a church service or in an assembly where there's other people present, and if you spoke in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14 is telling you that you have to interpret it in English. Speak, quit speaking in tongues and interpret it in English or have someone else do it. Kakati, but if you are by yourself, you don't have to stop praying in tongues and then speak forth an interpretation in English. All you need is for your understanding to become fruitful. Or beneficial. Personally, here's the way that it works with me. I just pray in tongues. And then as I'm praying in tongues, I'm also praying with my mind. And I, God supernaturally quickens things to me. I learned this kind of uh, by trial and error. Because when I first started speaking in tongues, I would pray in tongues long periods of time and you had to do something with your mind. So I would just start praying in my mind as I was praying in tongues. And supernatural things were happening. People were coming to my memory that I hadn't thought of in years. And then after I would pray in my understanding while I was praying in tongues, within the next week or so, these people had come across my path and I'd realized that I had been praying for them. And I just begin to learn by experience that what was happening was as I was praying in tongues God was making my understanding be influenced by these supernatural things that I was speaking out of my mouth. I couldn't understand the words, but I could get the revelation of what I was praying about. And this happened so often that when I would be praying in tongues and all of a sudden somebody had just come to my mind out of the blue, I began to start realizing this is God. And I would follow it up by calling that person or going to see them. And every time, it was the Spirit of God leading me. And so that's one of the ways 
that God can communicate to you supernaturally. In your spirit, you already know everything. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, When you pray in an unknown tongue, it's your spirit praying, the part of you that knows all things. So all you have to do then is just get that understanding into your mind of what's happening in your spirit. Praying in tongues and asking for an interpretation will do that. It is a super powerful benefit that a lot of people don't understand. Praying in tongues isn't only to give you a proof that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a useful tool that you can use to expand your understanding and let you receive supernatural revelation from God. And that'll benefit every one of us. So I pray that you'll start praying in tongues and receiving the interpretation of the things that you're praying.